Hi, I'm Tony Stolzfus, and this is How to Read the Bible Like a Human Being. So, why would you want to read the Bible like a human being? What the heck is this, and why would you invest the energy in doing it? And there's a real simple and powerful explanation. Most of us learn to study the Bible with our rational brains. We learn what we're supposed to do from Scripture. We learn what we're supposed to believe from Scripture. Those are rational pursuits. But most of us have never been taught how to study the Bible with our emotional brains. Our emotional brains learn through visualization and experience. They learn by identifying with a character and being able to say, oh, what this person experienced here, this is like what I experienced over here. And if you've only read the Bible with your rational brain, if your main pursuit has been, what do I need to do and what do I need to believe? you've been reading the Bible with half your brain. <laughs> that means there's a whole other 50% of, of what you can get from Scripture that's completely untapped. There's huge amounts of low-hanging fruit over here because you've never explored this country. So the benefit of studying with the emotional brain is, man, there's just a whole dimension of Scripture that just opens up to you that you've never gone to before. So what's that other dimension? What does it look like? Uh, it's probably easiest for me to tell you through a, you know, to give you an image to show you what it looks like. So let's take the story of Jesus stilling the storm. And what happens is Jesus has preached all day long. He's given the parable of the sower. He's explained things to his disciples. They've literally been going all day. They're in a boat parked a little bit offshore because the crowd is so big that Jesus needs to get some space. <laughs> Otherwise, he gets mobbed by people who want healing. Demons are running up yelling, you're the son of God, and he's telling them to shut up and casting them out. So this has been a big day. Jesus and his guys get on the boat and there's an interesting little sentence in there. It says, and they took him just as he was. Now, why would Mark write that little sentence? They took him just as he was. It, it almost sounds like Jesus is in this passive role and the disciples are carrying him along with him. How, what, what is that? How could that be? Well, when we stand back and look at it from a human perspective, if you spent an entire day teaching, if you've been on stage for eight or nine hours, how do you feel at the end of the day? Well, I know how I feel because I've done that a lot. I'm exhausted. <laughs> All my words have been used up. <laughs> I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to go crawl in my corner <laughs> and be all by myself and recuperate. I'm an introvert. Um, so what happens later in the story is Jesus is asleep in the boat and the place he probably slept was under the rear deck. There's a variety of reasons. You'll find them if you do the study. But why did Jesus fall asleep in the boat? He's exhausted. So what does it mean that they took him just as he was? Well, maybe by the time they went on land and grabbed all their knapsacks and got the boat ready to go, Jesus has already fallen asleep under the back deck. So they took him just as he was. So they head out across the lake. This storm whips up, and this particular kind of storm is a windstorm. It's not a storm with clouds. And at this time of year, this was the storm the fishermen most feared because it came without warning. You couldn't see a storm front coming. The wind just came down off the Golan and it really put you in a world of hurt. So all of a sudden, the disciples are hit by this storm. The boat is taking on water. You know, water is coming over the sides of the boat. Probably some of the disciples are down in the bottom bailing for their lives. Uh, in that kind of situation, people don't observe a lot of the niceties. They're not saying, hey, Matthew, would you mind taking that bucket and bailing a little bit? Peter's at the helm screaming, Matthew, get down in the bottom of the boat and bail. <laughs> These guys are afraid. They're agitated. They're terrified. And then Jesus stills the storm. 
um, what happens when you're in a crisis and all of a sudden it's over? I remember one time I took a guy to the hospital that almost bled to death in my car. And while the crisis is there, there's this thing you do where you just sort of, here's my objective and I'm going to do it. But after you get him to the hospital and the pressure's off, I wish I had to sit in the car and just shake. <laughs> you know, there's blood all over the seat from this guy. But that's the state the disciples are in after Jesus stills the storm. They're shaking. They're, they've had a huge adrenaline rush, and now it's gone out of them. And they're just spent. They're done. And they pull up to the shore, and the first thing that happens is this screaming lunatic who's naked with cuts all over his body, filthy, ratty hair, comes running at them screaming, I know who you are. If I'm one of the disciples at this moment, I jump back on the boat and I tell the other guys to cast off. <laughs> we are not staying here. But I say all that to say those are the kinds of things you've probably never thought about that passage. And you haven't thought them because we're not trained how to visualize what's going on in a passage. And we're not trained how to feel what those people would have felt. So this is what this kind of study is about. And if there are things in that little monologue I just gave that you've never thought of, get ready because this kind of study will just explode those all over. You will learn things that you never learned. You'll ask questions you never thought of. You'll see the people in scripture in a whole new way. So that's the reason to do this kind of study is that level of discovery. And we do it through three key tools. We work with the emotional brain, so we get the missing half of scripture. We visualize, so we have a real picture in our head of what's going on. And we identify with these people so we can feel what they feel. So, if you're listening to this and thinking about getting involved, Join us. It's a great adventure. The website has some ways that you can get involved or you can get the materials to start your own group and experience this kind of thing. So thanks for your time.